What is going on, guys? Welcome back to this, uh, insanity. Uh, I believe this- we left off when Nelly was about to get married to some guy she doesn't want to get married to. And it was that one guy she was talking about, uh, earlier on. It's like some kid she didn't like. I, but I guess that's where we are now. Now, now, Nelly. You love the theater, so don't look so cross. Oh, I thought she was getting married. She's at the theater. This is all right. His name was Arthur. Yeah, Arthur smells. Oh God, this this fucking music. This <laughs> this is kind of freaky. Huh? Nellie was out with a man other than her brother that evening. A rare sight indeed. And she was quite clearly in a foul mood. When is she not? I will not stand for this. That I should have to marry a man as dis disagreeable as Arthur. It's unthinkable. The young man at her side was Nellie's fiancé, selected by her parents. Arranged marriages. On any other occasion, she would have snubbed an invitation from any man who was not Mel, but she had uh, but she had little say in this matter. She was, for lack of a better word, forced to go out with him. And, oh, how furiously she had fought against it. She had shoved aside the Abigail trying to fasten her corset, locked herself in her room, and sobbed for quite some time. It required the combined efforts of several of us to get her ready and out the door for her date. Come now, you should at least pretend you're enjoying yourself. Or do you want people to think we don't get along? Ah, oh, so this guy's kind of a douche. Do we get along? Well, I want you for what it's worth. For what it's worth to you is my name, not me. Are you really going to be like that? Uh, uh let's see. Should I give him Mel's voice? I'm not sure. Are you really going to be like that? I went out of my way to take you to your favorite play. The least you could do is be a little kinder to me. What was it called again? Romeo and Juliet? It's been running for six or seven years now. A family like yours or mine could pay to have a brand new script written. So why should we have to see an old play at a theater full of commoners? It may be private, but even so. <laughs> I would rather just have a show put on at my estate. Stop talking already. Why should I... Why should I have to marry someone like you? I have absolutely no desire to marry you. Whatever it takes, I will put a stop to this. I'll talk to my father as many times as I must. Please don't make such a scene. It's shameful. There are people around. Remember, you represent your family. Besides, our families are hardly strangers to one another. Try as you might, I doubt you can get rid of me. No matter what you say, you can't break this engagement. You don't... Your parents gave you too much freedom, and look what a spoiled little girl you became because of it. Goodness, you're going to be quite the handful. Says the spoiled douchebag who doesn't know anything other than being a spoiled douchebag. Oh, get off your high horse. Man, the irony here is ridiculous. No, you're the one on a high horse, Nelly. You're going to be my wife, so you could, so you could at least put some effort into liking me. What happens when I take you to a social engagement and you act like this? It's shameful to both of us. The c this coming from someone who used to call me Lady Nelly. What's your problem? When you choose to act like a lady, I'll gladly call you that again. Goodness gracious. Put yourself in my shoes for a second. I have to marry a bratty little girl because it will help my family. How dare you talk about me that way? You're not a damned princess. Open your eyes. If you think talking to your father will get you out of this marriage, you're welcome to try. I doubt he'll have it, though. Otherwise, you can just go complain about it to your friends. Oh, that's right. As far as I'm aware, you don't have any friends. God, so this guy's just a... Just a fucking reprehensible piece of shit. Like... Wow. Yeah, so I can see why she doesn't like him. Enough! As you wish. This is so frustrating. Why should I have to listen to this jerk mock me? I have Mel. I know if father won't listen to me, I'll ask Mel to talk to him. Mel will be able to convince him. Come on now, your favorite play is about to start. Maybe you should face forward. Enjoy it while it lasts. You won't be talking down to me for much longer. Romeo and Juliet at the Globe Theater. What? Is that... Wait, Nelly! Get back here! What is that damned child's problem? I didn't give her permission to leave. Father will be sure to hear about this. I cannot have the roads making any more of a fool of me. Uh-oh. Uh, um, I, I... 
you're fine. Don't be shy. But so many people are looking at me. <laughs> That's because you're gorgeous. No, it's because I look strange. I assure you, that's not the case. It is true that you have an unusual appearance, but right now the unique color of your hair, your skin, and your eyes all serve to accentuate your beauty. Y you sound like a prince, Lord Mel. What? Y you think so? I mean, I did say I'd be a standard prince for you, but... I think you're a wonderful prince, not just a stand-in. So, like, are the two of them putting on a play? Is that what's going on? Which makes you my princess, then. I... I don't... Ah, you're supposed to say, yes, I am, there. You're going to make me sad. Uh, um, I... <laughs> I guess I'll just have to keep working at it until you submit. You will submit to my will, bitch. <laughs> oh, hey, the play's about to start. Um, what am I supposed to be doing? Nothing in particular. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, but there is one thing. Yes? I, if I start dozing off, could you maybe wake me up? Oh, okay, they're just watching it. I thought they were the ones putting on the play for some reason. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh-oh. N- What? Of course she's there. Dearest Mel! Uh-oh. Nelly? Dearest Mel, why are you- What are you doing here? I- I- I asked her to join me. It's nothing to get worked up over. I love how I was just being so nonchalant about this, like, whatever. I don't care. It is! It absolutely is! How many times did I ask you to come with me and you wouldn't? You don't even like theater, dearest Mel, and you brought her? You're right. I'm not especially fond of plays, but I wanted her to be able to see one. Why are you making such a big deal out of this, Nelly? She's not suitable for you! What? She isn't good enough for you! Why wouldn't you- why would you choose her? She's creepy and you have no idea where she came from. Yeah, says the creepy sister who wants to bang her brother and, you know, has, has an obsession with him. Don't talk about her like that, Nelly. But you don't even know who her family is. I do. What? Um, Lord Mel. It's fine. You just stay quiet. Like the other maids, she comes from a respectable house. I looked into it. However, circumstances prevent me from telling you what house that is. House Bolton. No, you're lying. That can't be. She's... but she's... she doesn't act like a lady. She lacks etiquette and she probably can't even dance. You expect me to believe someone like her is from a good house? Enough already, Nelly. M mel you yelled at me. You have my word. You don't have to worry about her. So please, stay out of this, Nelly. It isn't any of your business if I spend time with her, is it? But... but, dear Smell... You need to stop hanging all over me, Nelly. Went and find someone for... Wait. What are you doing at the theater? Are, are you here alone? Ah. Uh, oh, yes, dear Smell. About that. I have a favor to ask of you. I've been waiting to tell you about this since yesterday, but I haven't seen you at all. Settle down, Nelly. What is it? Father had me engaged without consulting me. And he picked Arthur, that disagreeable little... Oh, right, that. I already knew. What? I heard about it from Father. That reminds me, you didn't show up at breakfast this morning. I see now, it was because of your engagement. Dearest Mel! Is that who you're here with today? In that case, you should get back to him, rather than waste any more time with us. You knew I didn't want to get married, Mel, so why? Why didn't you talk Father out of it? Because... it's your time, Nelly. If there's someone else you'd rather be with, then, well, you can try persuading father, but... You're... you're the only prince for me, dearest Mel. And a prince always grants her princess's wishes, doesn't he? I just want you to say you'll do that for me, dearest Mel. L lady Nelly, you stay out of this. It's all your fault. It's because you showed up and played your little tricks on him. I warned you about this rat, dearest Mel. She's not suitable for... I told you I'd had enough already. Oh, shit. Slapped. How much longer are you going to continue acting like a child? I can deal with you being a spoiled little girl, but how dare you be so derisive to someone else? M Mel, hit me. L Lord Mel. Go on, the show's about to start. P people are giving us dirty looks. Return to your betrothed now. I will apologize to him afterwards as well. You said you would always be my by side. 
that you would always be my prince. The time for make-believe is past, Nilly. N no I refuse to believe it. I will not have it. Nelly! My goodness, that girl. Are you not going after her, Lord Mel? No, just let her go. The only place she even has to go is home. I just wish she'd start acting a little more like an adult. I imagine Lady Nelly simply... Hmm? She what? No, it just wasn't my intention to get between you. Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault we had an argument. But you two are so close. Well, yeah, we're siblings, so we're close, but nothing more. I do care about Nelly, and I enjoy spending time with her, but she's my sister, nothing more. Anyway, sorry for making such a scene. No, I... I imagine she left her betrothed behind without saying anything, so I'm going to go apologize to him. We have to keep up appearances. Stay here, I'll be right back. Very well. I'm gonna go apologize to that little fucking douchebag. Master... What are your thoughts on this tale so far? Which of the siblings do you think wasn't the right master, the brother or the sister? Uh, what are my thoughts on... I mean... Okay, let's see. So Arthur is a cunt. Um, Nelly needs to stop being so fucking obsessed with her brother. And maybe this wouldn't turn into some kind of tragedy, which I'm assuming it's going to turn into. Oh my, I apologize for the abrupt question. Did I startle you? What do I think? Hmm, yes, I believe Mel's was probably right. He was also surely happier than her. As Mel had anticipated, Nelly fled from the theater, leaving her fiancé behind. Well, I mean, I think that it's stupid that Mel doesn't seem to realize how much of an asshole Arthur, Arthur really is, and he's not good for his sister. But at the same... I mean, I don't know, I just feel like... I, I know it probably wouldn't fix anything, but I think if Mel, like, had some kind of long talk with her about, like, you know, okay, you need to stop being so creepy and stop going after me and find somebody else, then maybe she would change her mind, but I highly doubt it. So I don't really think that would have made a difference. She forced her way into a carriage stopped outside, probably one called for a different nobleman, and ordered it to take her home. Mel's assumption was correct. The only place she had to return to was the mansion. The sun was beginning to set, and as a young lady, she could not simply go wandering through the town alone, nor did she have any acquaintances to take her in. Her world was, in essence, composed of two elements, her brother and the Rose Garden. They were the light of her life at Rose Manor. She lived a very isolated existence. I guess she's kind of like the white-haired girl in that way. They're both very, very lonely. <sighs> n n n <laughs> when she escaped back home, Nelly went straight to her room, locked the door, and began sobbing. The waves of her sorrow came crashing effortlessly over the levees. Tears streamed through the cracked walls of the dams, blocking her tear ducts. <laughs> Why? Why won't you help me, Mel? Why won't you take my side? The decor in her room appeared blurry through her damp eyes. Memories of the day she had it redecorated played back in her mind with crystal clarity. She told me she had no feelings for you. That liar, that liar. That bitch, I must kill her. She let her emotions run wild, breaking glass craftwork, silver plates designed by famous foreign artisans, flower vases, all sorts of things. It was as though a beast had been set loose in her bedchamber. The vase she tossed shattered against the painting hanging on the wall, spraying water, porcelain, and roses in every direction. It was the portrait she adored so dearly of her and her brother. Ah. Uh and in what appeared to her like a metaphor for her life, the frame fell off its mounting and came crashing to the floor. You know how much money we paid for that? Nellie darted over and scooped it up. The frame had broken, but the painting inside was unharmed. The two smiling children were still the very image of happiness, inseparable siblings gently holding one another's hand. My prince is no more. Though in her present state of mind, the, that image of happiness brought her nothing but misery. And the worse she felt, the more frustrated she grew at the smiling girl and the kind boy of her past. The princess is no more either. You're not a princess anymore, Nellie. Some other woman has taken your place. I trusted you, Mel. I believed you would always be there for me. This painting is nothing but a lie. That's not the real Mel. That's not the real me. It's all a big fat lie. A lie. Uh, 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 I wish the painting never existed. That was that it was never made. That I never had a brother. This painting. This painting. This chair. 
In a fit of emotional distress, she, she scratched feverishly at the painting she once considered precious. She put more force into her fingers than she, or perhaps anyone, might have imagined she could. Flakes of paint began falling off the canvas, and in time, she noticed something peculiar. Huh? What is this writing? Something's hidden beneath the paint. Just a little more. A date? Why would that be hidden? What could it be for? Com pleaded. Completed May 1587. 1587. She read aloud the faded, scratched-up handwriting. After staring blankly at the text for some time, the color in her face began to drain. What is this? How... How could this have been painted 16 years ago? I... I wasn't even born yet then, and Mel would have been just a baby. Is this not me? Is this not Mel? Oh... Oh shit, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Her parents... Her parents... Her parents are like... Uh, brother and sister. They're incest children. Plot twist. M. Night Shyamalan is blushing right now. <laughs> There's still more writing. No, no, if it was M. Night Shyamalan, her parents would be like aliens or something. Urged by her rapidly pounding heart, Nellie furiously scratched away at the painting. Even as her clean pink fingernails were soiled with fragments of paint and blood, she did not stop. She was so overwhelmed by trepidation that she could not stop. She had a horrible premonition that something was about to happen. Something indescribable, incomprehensible. Th this is how I envision your son and our unborn daughter might look several years from now. Your son and our unborn daughter. So this was a painting of the future. Then it really is of me and Mel. No, use your head, stupid. I'm only 14. 16 years ago, I would not have even been inside Mother. But then, but then who is this? Who is that holding Mel's hand? Who is that with my brother? More, more, there has to be... Ow! Found it. There's more writing. I have to know what that is. Calm down. Calm down, Nelly. It's nothing to get worked up over. I'm sure it's nothing. Calm down and read. There's nothing to worry about. If, if our unborn child... This is what the writing on the painting said. If our unborn child does not have your hair color, then you will probably not be able to take her in as your own. I will be punished and my life made miserable. And so I pray that this child might have flaxen hair. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh no. That means, oh no. Ah. Oh. Accidental incest, maybe? So wait a minute. The child is the un- The child is actually the white-haired girl. She's like... Oh... Oh... Ugh... I- I swear if that's the case. If- If the white-haired girl is like actually their sister and they don't know that... Because she doesn't have flaxen hair, for some reason she has white hair... And she was like kicked out of the mansion or so- Oh my god... That would be- That's clever. But that's fucking creepy, like... Though, is it a sin to wish she has in her a trace of me? I do hope it is a girl. What am I reading? I don't get it. Someone tell me, what does this mean? A painting from 16 years ago. Hair color. Sin. I do hope it is a girl. And this is cleverly hidden within the painting. Uh oh. Yes? It's Nelly. Let me in. Lady Nelly. Oh, you changed out of your dress. That's a shame. It looked nice on you. <laughs> it really did look so nice. Almost like you were a princess. Um, Lady Nelly. Say, I've got a question for you. Do you mind? By all means. What color hair did your father have? I beg your pardon? Did you not hear me? Should I repeat the question? N no I assumed it would be about Lord Mel. I'm just so curious about where you got that white color from. I... I... My my father was more tan than white, so I didn't inherit paleness from anyone. I asked about your father's hair color. What? Why would you want to? There's no reason you can't tell me, is there? My father, um, had white hair, but that was simply because he was an older man. I did not think he was born with... Ha! <laughs> Lady Nelly. 
Someone's about to die. <laughs> hey, guess what? I figured it out. I figured it all out. <laughs> and it was so simple. There's only one difference between you and me. That thing that Mel fell for is... Wh why do you have those? N no, stay back. Bitch about to die. I knew it. I knew it. She's going to go on a murderous rampage. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good. So, I kind of wonder what she figured out. Like, was it that she's actually somehow related to them? Ah, uh, we have finally reached this point in the tale, Master. If your memory has been refreshed, then we can return to the mansion immediately. Very well, then. If you insist, Master, we shall proceed with the story. It was a stormy night, much like the one the white-haired girl had first arrived on. It was as quiet as a crypt in the mansion, not a single light visible in the halls. The house sat in wait for the sun to peek out over the horizon. The darkness is, generally speaking, something that rushes by like a gust of wind as we sleep. The flaxen-haired young man, too, lay in bed, pale blue moonlight sporadically streaming in through the gaps in his drawn velvet curtains as he attempted to submit to slumber. He was having difficulty drifting off, but as time trickled onwards, he drew closer and closer to the arms of Morpheus. Morpheus? Take the blue pill, Neo. Or... Mel. Mm. Suddenly, he sensed a presence in the room, much like the one from those nights some weeks earlier. Is someone there? Yeah, it's probably his sister this time. Answer me! A slender, feminine figure pressed gently against his lips. There was no hostility in the motion, but rather a great deal of affection. Yo! The silhouette faintly visible in the dark room was the same as that night. A flash of lightning shone through the drawn curtains, illuminating her beautiful white hair. Several silky locks spilled over her shoulders and brushed against Mel's cheeks. A couple soft puffs of air trickled his face, as though she were silently laughing. He assumed her finger held against his lips was her way of telling him to stay quiet. She began to slowly, delicately trace the outline of his mouth, moving down his cheek and along his jawline as if over porcelain. You, you're uh, rather more forward than I remember. Well, I suppose you always were quite daring. This isn't the first time you've sneaked into my bedchamber. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait. I'm imagining something really fucked up right now, but... Okay, so... Nell, or, um, Nelly already killed her, and she somehow... Like, after she killed her, she cut all her hair off, and she's, like, using it as a wig or some shit to make her look like the white-haired girl. But since it's so dark, uh, Mel can't tell who it is. I don't know. Let's wait and see if that actually happens, because I am... I'm calling it. I'm calling that that's, that's what it is, because it's not... It can't be the white-haired girl. This was not the first time the two of them had been physically intimate. Do you remember the night she came to exact revenge on him for her father? His kindness touched her, setting her free, and not merely emotionally either. Oh dear, no. I do not mean that crudely. The most effective way to warm another's heart has remained unchanged for as long as man has walked this earth. Though, of course, that assumes there exists a strong emotional connection between the two. It's Doc. I can't see you very well. Why don't I light a lamp, or perhaps we could open the- Before he could finish, the white-haired girl sealed his lips with her own. In the near total darkness of his bedchamber, the two shadows appeared as one. Okay, please don't tell me incest is about to happen here. Well, incest already kind of did happen. <laughs> they remained that way for several minutes. Their kiss was innocent, no more than the pressing of two pairs of lips. And at the same time, the, the, the white-haired girl lovingly ran her fingertips across his skin. When their lips separated, Mel gasped for air. It seemed he had been holding his breath. Slightly embarrassed at himself, he said, Oh shit. Oh, it is! It's her! It's her! I told you! I told you! What did I say? Got it! Oh shit. Yep, she's wearing her hair. Oh man, that is fucking creepy. That is fucking creepy. Oh. Nothing. He could not speak. The silhouette hanging above him was certainly the white-haired girl's. Or was it? Because his next words were, G Get off of me! He reflexively shoved the girl straddling him aside. She went full Yandere mode. She rolled off the bed, landing on the cold floor, but slowly, gradually, she crawled her way back toward him. That wasn't very nice. Veiled in darkness, she slowly lifted her head. And then, there was another flash of lightning. The heavy fabric of the curtains rustled, bolts of lightning streamed between the gaps. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. That is fucking good. Her flax and irises glimmered, and apparently that gave me a new item in my Steam inventory. You got a new item in your Steam inventory, Yon inventory Yandere sister. Though in the bluish-white light, they took on the twinge of almost golden glow. No need to be so rough. This isn't the first time she's visited your bedchamber. Is it, Mel? Or did I not kiss you the same way? Tell me, how does she run her fingers across your skin? What does she do when she nuzzles up to you? S stop Stop this madness, Nelly! What, why would you- why would you do this? Because you like white hair, don't you, Mel? But you like white hair, which is why you fell for her, isn't it? <laughs> so if I have white hair, then you'll fall for me too. Then can I be your princess again, dearest Mel? What? what are you even talking about? He could not escape from her, from his sister's piercing gaze. Why? What happened? How could she? Questions crashed into the young man's mind like waves in a stormy sea, but none of them found answers. They simply caused him further perplexity. Y your hair! What happened to your hair? How did you get it that color? Oh, this? <laughs> I fucking knew it. Yep, yep. You like my wig? Yeah, <laughs> she did. She did. But as soon as the words left her mouth, Mel was in motion, propelled by pure instinct. He clenched Nellie's shoulders tight enough to dig his fingers into her flesh. <sighs> You're hurting me, Mel. Wh what did you do to her? Tell me, what did you do? I made her leave. It was a perfectly reasonable decision. She was obviously not nobility, and thus hardly fit to be a part of this household. But there's no need to worry, Mel. I'm here to take her place. You sound like a madwoman! I- it doesn't matter if she was of noble blood or not. She promised she would stay by my side. So why? How could you do that to her? I promised you that long before she ever did. And I- I love you far more than she ever did, Mel. How- have you lost your mind? You're not making any sense! Where is she now? What is she doing? It's always her with you. What more could you want from me? Tell me, what does she have that I don't? What do I have to do to get you to focus on me and only me? We're siblings. Don't you understand what you're doing? Oh, I understand quite well. Far better than you do, dearest Mel. I even know that a former queen was executed for it. But, if we don't get caught, there's no problem. Nelly, you! Are you saying you've always felt this way about me? Oh my, you didn't notice, dearest Mel. You truly are a dense one. I guess romance just isn't your strong suit. But you've noticed now, haven't you? You know exactly how I feel about you, right? Quit it! Enough! Don't say anything else! Stop! Stop having these insane feelings for me! Yeah, that's... it's it, it's just that easy, Mel. Just tell her to stop and she'll stop. It's disgusting! <laughs> what, what are you laughing about? Poor, poor Mel, content in your complete ignorance. All right, I'll tell you everything. Mel, you can only love blood-related women. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It's, <laughs> I, I told you guys I'm a prophet. I mean, you know, I can just predict all of this. It's, <laughs> huh? His cackling sister appeared to him like some kind of inhuman life form. Her actions and incomprehensible exclamations slowly drained him of his strength. What kind of deranged nonsense is that? I love her. She's... Your sister, Mel. Ha. Ha ha ha. Very funny. How far out of your mind have you gone, Nelly? Poor, poor, poor Mel. Do you honestly know nothing? Say that her father was a painter. He painted pictures for a living. What? What of it? For a time, her, her father painted for our family. You've seen the pictures before, dearest Mel. The one hanging in my room of the two of us. That was painted by her father. <laughs> he did a good job, didn't he? I kept asking and asking until he finally agreed to hold my hand. And how did you feel about that? You were rather embarrassed, weren't you? Yeah, this uh, this music in the background this is in like another language. I'm not sure what that is. That's that's that is pretty fucking creepy. I I'll say the music for this game is really fucking creepy. Like Jesus Christ. Do you remember that day, dearest Mel? <laughs> you couldn't possibly remember it, but there's a chance you might remember this. Before we moved to this mansion, we had a painter with white hair. I I don't remember any such thing. He was long ago. A painter in service of the Rhodes family. But that painter did something very, very bad, and because of that, he couldn't remain a part of our household. Oops. Do you know what he did, Mel? He lay with Mother. Oh, shit. My father was chased from your house. If the child had been born with flaxen hair, the painter would not have been thrown out. 
the baby would have been accepted as part of the family. But that wasn't how it turned out. The child had white hair. She didn't look at all like she carried the Rhodes family blood. But see, mother and me... <laughs> that that I'm here is all the proof you need. The girl born 16 years ago didn't have flaxen hair. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms and ran his hands through my hair, an apologetic look on his face. You, you're talking total nonsense! What, what proof do you have? If you want to see it, I'll gladly show you. The artist left a message in the painting in my room. Tell me, am I truly wrong? What did that girl tell you? you you're lying! What part of it is a lie, Mel? Everything I'm telling you is the truth. Why don't you go ask Mother? <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure she would throw quite the fit. M mother wouldn't! The mistress did not send me away when she saw me. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. Yeah, that is kind of suspicious why she would just take her in like that. It never made any sense to me. Why would she hire a maid she knew nothing about? Someone who just showed up at the door one day. And when I asked mother to make me her maid, she stubbornly refused. From a good house, don't make me laugh. If she were really nobility, she would have given us her name. But mother was so desperate to cover up her mistake. <laughs> Th that doesn't make any sense. I don't believe a word you're saying. It couldn't possibly be true. Wouldn't it be nice if you could bury your head in the sand? But Nell, feigning ignorance is a sin. No! I refuse to believe it! Th not, not a chance in hell! You just don't understand anything. How I feel, how much I've suffered. Do you have any idea how long I've loved you? Knowing that, you would never accept my affection. But, but then, fancy that. You fell in love with your half-sister. Then I should qualify for your love too. Shouldn't I, Mel? <laughs> Why is that actually voiced? That's kind of weird, that's the only thing that's voiced. Stop it! Enough! Shut your mouth! Not another word! I... I don't... I don't believe any of this! So their entire family is like some kind of weird incest family. Uh... I can't really say I saw that twist coming, but... The more... Uh, the, the further this got to the end, which I'm assuming this is the end of the... This door, at least, uh... It became more and more predictable, like, more obvious that was what was going to happen. And I already knew from the beginning, just because of judging by how the sister interacted with him, the sister was going to go fucking crazy. Mel! <laughs> I know you'll never love me. I know there's nowhere for me to run. Say, when we were kids, was that really me? Was I really by your side, Mel? If that painting tells the whole truth, I was never, never once did I get to be your princess. Not even once. Well, shit. Dearest Mel, everyone just loves to dote on me. They're always telling me how pretty I am. Mother does, father does, and all the maids do too. I can do anything I want. So for me, acting like a spoiled child is the only form of rebellion I have. I don't know that I don't have the kind of freedom you do, Mel. I'm just a doll for the family to play with. When I have visitors, it's only ever for show. So it's not my fault that I don't have friends. Dearest Mel, you're the only one who's ever cared about me more than anything in the world. Dearest Mel, I always knew how I would react if you fell in love. I would cry my eyes out. I would envy her to death. I would get angry as a bull. But eventually, I would have given up. I knew I could never have it my way after all. My feelings would never bear fruit. So why did she have to be your sister? Tell me, why? Because fucked up incest stories? I don't know. Oh, but, uh, what a happy ending. Now, oh, flashback time. Oh, dearest Mel, here you are again, reading such hard books. Your eyes will go bad if you spend too long staring at pages. I'll be fine, Nelly. It's not like I'm reading 24 hours a day. No, that's not good enough. If your eyes go bad, dearest Mel, you won't be able to see me anymore. <laughs> you worry too much. I can see you fine and well, my princess. Your hair glimmering like the sun and your beautiful smile. I can see you clear as day, and that'll never change. <laughs> Plus, the skies are clear today, so you're even more radiant than usual. <laughs> you know, this is my favorite season. Winter's cold and there's so much rain I can't stand it. But as it gets closer to my birthday, the clouds go away, and I just adore the sun. Ah, yes, it's almost your birthday, isn't it? Have you decided what you're going to ask father for? Not yet. I want pretty dolls and shoes with sparkling gems. And I also want a pretty dress, the ones like mother wears. <laughs> a list that long is asking a bit much, even for father. But, but, dearest Mel... Hmm? 
I already have what I want the most. So the truth is, as long as I have that, I don't need anything else. Oh, and what would that be? The hairpin that they bought for you the other day. Or maybe the song that they had written for you last year. None of that, dearest Mel. Huh, then what could it be? Now I'm really curious. What is it that's so valuable to you? That's a secret. Girls have so many secrets, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> Say, dearest Mel, would you run your fingers through my hair? Just for a little bit. What's gotten into you, Nelly? Are you hu are you so hungry for attention all of a sudden? Please, dearest Mel. Oh, God, this is fucking, this is getting weird. Oh, Nelly, what am I going to do with you? Come over here. <laughs> and I want to sit on your lap. Yes, yes, as you wish, my beautiful, beautiful little princess. Uh, this is just getting real fucking creepy right now, isn't it? Say, um, dearest Mel. What is it this time, Nelly? Right now, I'm so incredibly... Happy. <laughs> yes. Kill them, kill them all. Kill them all and uh, have incestual sexual relations with my brother. Oh. oh, and out of curiosity, who was it that you really cared so much about? Bitch is dead now. I killed her, and now you're all mine. Well then. In a fevered frenzy, Mel fled from the mansion. Even in early summer, the night was cold. And to make matters worse, raindrops pelted him from head to toe. But that caused him little discomfort, for a far greater maelstrom of pain rampaged within his breast. At night, the town took on a different appearance. Not simply for lack of illumination, but the people active within it as well. It was not a suitable place for a young aristocratic man to go wandering unattended. The darkness is not only the abode of devils, but of beggars, thieves, criminals, and all manner of things undesirable. But despite that, he continued to run, knowing not where he was to head. He simply went where his feet took him, and where he arrived was the church. Uh-oh. father Father! The priest! The priest should be able to offer me some counsel, to answer all my questions. About that painting, about her, and about Nellie's feelings. No, not her lies, but the truth. Please, open the door. That's because, as we know, only the church can tell the truth. Open the door. But as you might expect, the door was locked, and the priest showed no sign of responding to his calls. The sound of the pouring rain drowned out everything else. <sighs> his head drooped feebly. He looked like a helpless little calf who had wandered alone onto a dark, precarious mountain path with no end in sight. Why? Why won't anyone tell me the truth? All I want, all I want is for someone to tell me it's not true. Have I sinned? No, I didn't know anything. I didn't know. So I was kind of right about the accidental incest thing. That's what's going on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't know that I was reading a uh, George R. R. Martin book. So I, ha I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not at fault, am I? Nevertheless, his sister's claims and her laughs continued to echo within his head. If he truly believed it to be false, he would have gone to look at the painting. That he could not was an indication that uncertainty had a stronger grip on him. Fragmented images of a white-haired painter fluttered through the back of his mind, but he desperately shoved them aside. What good is the church? What good is theology? What good is God? I... Uh-oh. Mel's becoming an atheist. I can't have that. <gasps> what? Something moved near the boy. It stood immediately behind him and grasped his light dressing gown. He had been so consumed in his own world that he had not noticed the person's presence until they were close enough to touch him. What? Who are you? Standing there was a beggar dressed in tattered rags. He's still begging at the church? The hooded beggar tentatively extended his hand toward Mel, pleading for relief with sad, slender fingers. Were he a generous young man, Mel would have given the beggar something. Were he a generous, of course. L lord Get your filthy hands off of me! I don't have a damn thing to give you right now! Don't you dare touch me! Suddenly, suddenly, the beggar's hand turned upward. My eyes catch the beggar's. Her hood fell back, revealing a hairless head. Oh, shit. She's still alive? Wh why And a pair of red eyes gazing bitterly, though with a familiar distinctive glimmer at Mel. Red eyes. She immediately covered her face and turned to run. I- It can't be! The beggar that's always been here was a- But you said yourself that they would not survive much longer. How could you be certain that she was that same beggar? Uh, uh, w wait! Wait for me! Perhaps, as someone of such high social standing, all beggars appeared the same to you? Or perhaps you wanted to believe your meager generosity made a difference, that you did something of value. I will not say it is wrong to think so. Wait for me! 
I chase after the fleeing girl. Though I shout for her to stop, she continues to run. The rain is so heavy, I'm afraid I might lose her. I'm terrified. But, but I didn't do anything wrong, did I? I'm begging you, please stop. I just want to talk. She comes to a stop at a corner. Why is Mel, uh, why is Mel narr narrating now? That's weird. Please do not go around this corner. It, it's you, isn't it? I am sorry. Why are you apologizing? What I said back there was terrible, and for that I am truly sorry. I didn't realize it was you. Please, come back to me. If you're concerned about social status, I'll figure something out. And Nellie's getting married off soon enough. Oh, yes, Nellie. Nellie did some horrible things to you. She, she's lost her mind. She was talking nonsense. But don't worry, she'll be out of the picture soon enough. I'll make sure you're safe. Sh say something, please. Are you angry? You're angry, aren't you? I am not angry at you. I am not... Did you know everything? Did you come to our house aware of everything? What? Did you? Tell me, please. The priest isn't around and everything Nelly says is a lie. You're the only one who would tell me it's not true. What are you? Our relationship. I don't understand what you're saying. Ha! 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 Ah, I see. You don't know. You don't know. It's for the best. <laughs> Mel's going fucking crazy. Nellie's the only one who knows, and she'll be gone before long. Everything will be alright. Lord Mel, it'll all be alright. Let's go back. I'll make sure you're never put in danger again. I'm begging you, stay with me. My appearance is no longer suitable to stand by your s to stand at your side. You saw how unsightly I am back at the church, did you not? Uh, hair can grow back. Th that's not a problem. Now I truly look the part of a hideous witch, but I am to blame. It was a sin for me to find happiness in your kindness. What are you talking about? You're- My sin was falling in love with you. Not what happened to my father, nor how we had to spend our days. There's no sin in that. We, we have our whole lives ahead of us. Don't we? With enough time, this whole tragic mess will be behind us. Things will only get better from here. I, I'll be your prince, like the one who took the girl to see the outside world. So please, give me, give me your hand. Come to me. Don't leave me all alone. I need you by my side. Please! I extend my hand around the corner. I sense her hesitating beyond the bend. I'm begging you. I can't see what's on the other side, but a vision of her reaching out to put her hand in mine wells up in my mind. But that story never had an ending. What? She doesn't take my hand. I doubt the girl ever wrote that letter. Uh. She's not there when I turn the corner. Why? How did things end up like, like this? Where did I go wrong? Oh god. Oh, there's the maid. I don't wonder what's up with the maid. Your error was likely your kindness. Thoughtlessly, haphazardly spreading your generosity. But that generosity came from your own desire to avoid pain. For your own happiness. I... I... What should I have done? I can't take this. Everyone, everyone was happy. Nellie used to laugh and smile. She once meant the world to me. How did things end up like this? It's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. If you pretended to like nothing happened, then perhaps they can go on smiling in your head. But regardless, you must follow the path you tread. It is your path alone. The path you chose when, in that moment, you decided to run. Make the wrong choice in those moments, and you shall find yourself on the road to ruin. Strangely enough, I don't think we make any choices in this visual novel. I would have been better off not knowing. Better off in the dark. I just wanted those tranquil days to last. Those, they were supposed to last forever. At some point, your childhood must come to an end. And that ending may not be the one you anticipated. I can't stand this world. You yearn for a world that would treat you with kindness. What should I do? What should I have done? Someone, please, help me. You should return now. If you spend too long out here, you are liable to catch a cold. Now let us return to our own time. Happy endings all around. Jesus. Is that really it? Is that really the end of their story? It's just like, well, she left, and I have to deal with my bitch crazy fucking psychotic sister. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, yep. Yep, we're done with that, it seems. The crestfallen young man faded into the distance, and the decrepit double doors clacked shut. Through the shattered glass, you could only see the ruins of a garden, not a single rose growing within. You had evidently returned from the past. In the garden, weeds grew taller than people. You found it difficult to look at. A wolf howled in the distance. The children, the sea of roses, and the white-haired girl were nowhere to be found. 
You and the maid who called you master were the only people present in the mansion. What happened to them next? Oh, master, you would know better than I. <laughs> my, you cannot remember. It seems this is quite serious, then. Worry not. My loyalty lies with you, master. The mansion has witnessed more yet. Let us make our way to the second door. Man, that's... That was fucking... Jesus. What the fuck? <laughs> what was that? Like... Man, that that's, uh... I kind of wanted to know what happened afterwards. I, I mean, I... What happened to his sister? Is she is did he just have to fucking end up marrying her and have more incest children? Your hand in hers, the maid guided you back through the kitchen and into the tea room. Her palms were still cold. You felt as though you were clenching ice. Master, do you wish to know the truth, no matter what may be hidden within? Or if it is something you would be happier not knowing, would you rather remain in the dark? Oh, is that so? <laughs> I wonder about their father. Yes, the flaxen haired sibling's father. Do you think he knew about the white-haired girl? If he did, then perhaps he allowed her to stay because of how deeply he loved his wife. Or maybe because he did not want people to find out about her. I expect he too experienced many different emotions, but those pages of his story remain untold. Their parents likely had a turbulent tale as well, but theirs is not of consequence. To whom, I could not tell you. Maybe the master is Mel. It's either Mel or someone else from one of these uh, other stories. You and the maid crossed through the entrance hall, continuing your trek. At some point, the fire in the fireplace had faded to embers, emphasizing the lack of light within the mansion. The maid took a candlestick and lit it in the cinders. The, the small flame illuminated her pale face. On a whim, you asked the maid about herself. About me? I am a maid devoted to your service, master, as I have said. Oh, what was that? You were interested in my name. <laughs> you flatter me. I truly do not appreciate the question, but you are more than welcome to simply call me the maid. Also, it would make me much happier to hear you say my name after you were called who you are, Master. A subtle smile rose to the maid's face, after which she began to lead you down a first floor corridor. It's some kind of plot twist. I mean, obviously, it has to be, right? Still holding the maid's hand, you, you passed in front of a full-length mirror. In it reflected the warm light of the candle, which disappeared out of range shortly thereafter. Oh my, is something the matter? Did you come across something peculiar? <laughs> The maid had not appeared in the mirror. Oh, she's a ghost. Or a vampire. Though she was not the only one without a reflection. Oh, so you're a ghost too. You're both... You, you're both ghosts. You're already dead. And you're not actually alive. That doesn't really surprise me if that's going to be what it... What, uh... What the, uh, quote-unquote twist is at the end of this. You reached the end of the corridor. There appeared to be a doorway, but the door itself was long since gone, leaving only a hole in the wall to frame the stairs behind it. Without hesitation, the maid descended into the darkness. You have more interest in this mansion, Master, than in a mere maid, do you not? Though it pains me to say as much in your presence, Master, this house is cursed. Yes, it is a curse that runs deep. As you just bore witness to, the majority of those who dwell within these walls fall into misfortune. I have served here for many years, and periods of happiness are as fleeting as a sugar cube in a cup of hot tea. Why did such tragedies befall them? If I were to guess, Master, it was because you had not returned. But when you remember your true self, the mansion's curse should be broken. The next door is before us. It appeared to be the entrance to a cellar. The disconsolate wooden door was visibly rotten in several places, and it seemed it might crumble at a single touch. You could hear the sound of something devouring meat beyond the door. What? Maybe there was a beast living within. Before you had a chance to say you thought it was dangerous, the maid opened the door with a chilling smile on her face. Your first impression was that it smelled of blood. Oh, this is going to be pleasant. <laughs>